Driving the agenda of the world's aging population. That's the ongoing mission of the International Federation on Aging. Dr. Jane Barrett is the Secretary General of the IFA. It's an intricate network of individuals and organizations representing over 75 countries and 80 million people worldwide. And there's certainly strength in those numbers, Dr. Barrett. Thank you so much for taking some time. It's great to be with you this afternoon. As a global point of connection, how is the IFA working with those experts worldwide through this pandemic? Look, Sharon, COVID has brutally exposed the lives of older people in this pandemic, the frailty, the vulnerability, but also shone a light on in the resilience and the commitment of older people to continue. So the way that we do it is to bring expert, unlike experts together you know, from transportation and communication and government and non-government industry. Because very often, you know, we work in silos and now is the time for a common agenda, a common message and together to influence policymakers. So we do it in many ways through print, you know, through social media, through videos just like this. And critical that that information is accurate evidence-based information. Well, there is no information if it's not true. Now, we can go on and talk about fake news, but that's not relevant to this conversation because what we need to do is be able to inform the technical guidelines of WHO, you know, and also at a country level like Canada, Australia, Hong Kong. Because what we know now is that there are 7.6 million people that have tested positive the size of Hong Kong and 345,000 people died, size of the the, the population of Iceland. We also know that over 50% of those in Europe that died were older people. So now is the time to step up and influence policy. So is there potential that the pandemic will actually be a catalyst for action? Uh, When wouldn't time not be the critical time? because every single person has been affected by COVID, whether they're in a lockdown, whether they're on the front line, whether they've had a family member that's died. And equally, you know, we know that by 2050, there'll be 2.1 billion older people. But older people in the pandemic is not the problem. You know, the problem with the pandemic has been absent, broken and inadequate healthcare systems. So while IFA advocates for healthy ageing, we need to put it in the context of the systems that are actually breaking down. Well, we're kicking off the decade of healthy ageing, and there are four key areas that are reflected definitely through COVID-19. They are. You know, the way we think, feel and act about growing older, ageing, you know, long-term care, primary integrated care, and age-friendly cities and communities, so the age-friendly environment. You know, if I had my way, we would looking, we'd be looking at each of those through the lens of COVID because that's the acute, you know, frontline issue that's exposing in the harshest possible way the lives of older people. Because, Sharon, ageism existed six months ago, 12 months ago. Issues in long-term care existed 10 years ago but there's been a lack of thoughtful investment in each of those four areas. You know, we're very fortunate. I shouldn't say fortunate. You know, it should be that member states have signed off to the final document for the decade of healthy ageing, and Canada has signed on to it. So we have a responsibility and we are accountable. And certainly if we want to ensure the young of the nations of the world are well set up to be living in valued environments moving forward, it is a necessity, it is a must. It is a must. See, equity does matter and it has life and death consequences right at this time. And so, you know, ageism can affect all of us. You know, younger populations are now being called vectors. You know, older ones are being called boomer removers, you know, now is not the time to actually throw, you know, crass lines out, but now is the time to understand the evidence around intergenerational solidarity. As you say, there is an unprecedented need for collective action. Dr. Jane Barrett, we thank you so much for taking some time to share with Newspoint today. 
Thanks very much, Sharon. It's been a pleasure.